Shale gas is usually extracted through fracking. The process frees the gas, which is trapped thousands of feet below ground, by pumping millions of gallons of water plus sand and chemicals into a well lined with metal and cement. Let's uh, talk a little bit more about all of this with our industry correspondent, John Moylan. And it's a subject that really, really divides people, isn't it, John? It absolutely is, because this is not how we've traditionally got our energy offshore. This is very much onshore. This is in people's backyards. I mean, I've been up at one of the sites in Lancashire where this is happening, and it is literally a mile away from where people live in the open countryside. So this is about extracting gas from rock that's a mile down in the ground using you know, methods which involve a lot of water, a lot of chemicals. We know that in the past they set off seismic activity and small earth tremors, and so there has been a lot of concern about this. So the, the work in Lancashire was shut down last year when a series of earth tremors happened. Um, some reports were carried out in, into it by scientists. The government has looked at all, the, at all of those, consulted on it, uh, but it has concluded that it can give the go-ahead in principle for exploratory fracking in the UK to resume. Ed Davey, the Secretary of State, said that you know, shale gas was a promising new energy source. It could help our energy security. We'll have a homegrown source of energy that it would reduce our reliance upon imported gas but he said there would also be some new controls. Now, earlier he was speaking in the Commons and he explained why he had given the go-ahead for shale gas fracking. Shale gas may prove to be a useful addition to the UK's diverse portfolio of energy sources and will be particularly valuable in replacing declining North Sea supplies with benefits to energy security as well as to the economy and employment. But its exploitation will only be acceptable if it is safe and the environment is properly protected. Hydraulic fracturing operations for shale gas were suspended last year pending consideration of seismic events in Lancashire. Based on the latest evidence and expert advice, and having considered the responses to a public consultation on that advice, I have concluded that in principle fracking for shale gas can be allowed to resume subject to new controls to mitigate the risk of seismicity. There's been four wells fracked in the file. Two have failed. No inquiry why they failed, no fines, no regulations. I believe the HSE has been to the, never been to these sites for two years. There's terrible things happening in America, in Australia, in Canada. We've had people over telling us about what they've had. People, people are breathing these gases in. There's, all these chemicals are in the ground. Some of them are coming out. We've got to have proper regulations. Margot James. Well, let's get more reaction. Let's speak to Mark Wallace, who's from the Institute of Directors. He's there in our central London studios. Good morning. What reaction? Good morning. Well, I think it's good news. The government have made the right decision that uh, exploration of UK shale gas resources and the potential of them should go ahead. And that's something that I think should be welcomed by people who are interested in you know, actually reducing uh, pollution coming out of the UK, reducing reliance on uh, expensive foreign imports, but also in terms of creating jobs. I think there's a lot of potential here. I'll come back to jobs, but uh, good news, despite the risks that we were discussing there, seismic activity, water pollution... Absolutely wrong. What? It's gone wrong. Now. Emerson, do you know about this? I, I think that local people are the only people who can stop these things. Look at all the lies that they were told in the 1950s about nuclear power stations. Now people riddled with cancer and all sorts of horrible yes. diseases. They'll lie and lie and lie to you, and you're the Absolutely. only people who can stop them. Very good. It's vintage home counties territory, the pretty village of Balcombe in the Sussex Weald Valley. An unlikely site of protest, perhaps, but what happened today could prove just a taster because the oil industry has come to Stockbroker Belt. Well, I suppose in common with most people in Balcombe, if it's going to take place, we'd probably prefer it to be done somewhere else. Classic nimbyism. The parish council resolved to, first of all, find out as much information as it could on the process from reliable sources, then to inform all the residents. And in May of last year, we published the Balkan report on fracking. And thirdly, to listen to what the residents said. And we held a poll in the late summer and early autumn of last year. And of those people who responded to the poll, 82% wished the parish council to oppose fracking. And that is now parish council policy. Now, it has to be said that yesterday, the British politicians 
did us a tremendous service in uh, raising awareness of uh, what is potentially going to be unleashed in this country. Of course, two days ago, uh, Lord Howell made the observation that fracking should be restricted to the desolate northeast, which of course had the effect of really upsetting a lot of people who live in the not so desolate northeast. He uh, then added uh, fuel to the fire by uh, stating yesterday that he didn't actually mean the desolate northeast, he meant the desolate northwest, which of course frustrated the hell out of people who live in the not so desolate northwest. And then Michael Fallon chipped into the equation by stating that people in the southeast need to get used to being fracked. Now, the bottom line is that the people that are here right now, the people that are camping and intend to be here on a permanent basis, and the increasing number of people that are coming down on a daily basis. They're coming down on the train from London, they're getting here about 10.30 and then they're staying through the day to add their support. This is middle England. This is not the usual suspects of Occupy or Climate Camp or even necessarily you know, some of the more formalised anti-fracking groups. This is middle England that understand that if this process is unleashed on their community it will contaminate their water, their soil and their air. And this is actually the message that many of the people here are trying to get across to the police. Many of these police officers live in Sussex. Many of them, of course, have families. And effectively, what they're doing is they're helping the corporations establish their agenda to make large tracts of this country uninhabitable. This is going to be a long game. It has legs, but what it needs is more and more people to demonstrate their support for those who are here at the Balkan blockade. Failure to act now means that this abomination will be unleashed on their community, or beneath their community, at some juncture in the not so distant future. We have a very narrow window of opportunity, maybe six months, to stop this from happening. So get your butts down to Balkan and do it now. This is Ian R. Crane at Balkan on Thursday, the 1st of August 2013. I want a one word answer, yes or no. But uh, you're not understanding me. Will you move? No, I'm not. I'm not. I didn't say my answer. I didn't answer. I didn't answer. So you're going to have to undo your arms. I didn't answer you. I didn't answer you. No, I didn't you answer you. Hello. I did not. Oh, I, did, no, I did not. I did not give my answer. Right. I haven't finished talking. I did not give my answer. I did not give my answer. I did not give my answer yet. I did not. You are paid to protect me. You have sworn an oath to protect me, and you protecting foreign business to produce and steal this you're hurting me. I'm sitting on the public land, protecting the No, the reason I'm being arrested is because you protected the And though we are facing an enormous amount of problems, we are also being presented with an enormous amount of opportunity. And one of the greatest opportunities we have, I believe, is fracking, because fracking affects the water table. And water is something that is precious to everybody. I mean, it's very difficult to wake people up to things such as chemtrails. A lot of people simply will not believe it whereas fracking is right there in their faces and 
they have no choice but to believe it because it's there. And you can show them films such as Gasland where people are setting creeks on fire. And this is not normal, folks, because water does not normally bubble and burn that way. So even the most asleep person is very likely to wake up when it comes to fracking. And while we have their attention, we can then suggest that what is done to address the situation of fracking is not to address the fracking itself, but to address the cause of the fracking. And that is the government that allowed this to take place to begin with. Because any person with any degree of common sense knows that you don't explode toxic chemicals 11,000 metres below the surface of the ground. Because if you do, you pollute the groundwater. This is common sense. Any politician who suggests that it's not common sense and that we need a study into this phenomenon to determine whether there's any damage is an idiot and it is extremely important that these types of idiots are not in positions where they are making decisions that affect the lives of other people. This is simply common sense folks. And so that's the opportunity that fracking provides for us is to remove these idiots from their positions of power simply because enough is enough. <laughs>